Aren't you hungry? Huh. I always wondered where popcorn came from. Yes, hello everyone, my name is John and welcome back to Homeless Movies, where I like to give secondhand films a second chance to be appreciated. Troll 2 came out in 1990 and was and still is considered by some to be the greatest bad movie of all time. Mark from Fanboy Flicks loves this movie so much that he reviewed it not once, but twice on his own channel. It even has its own documentary, Best Worst Movie, which came out in 2009 and was directed by this guy, who's actually playing this kid, who's the star of our movie. The kid's name is Joshua, and he's currently being read a bedtime story by his grandpa Seth about a guy named Peter who has a run-in with some goblins, in a book called Davy and the Goblin, which to me kind of sounds like a morning radio show. Good morning, YouTube! You're listening to the KHLM 98 Schlock Morning Show with Davy and the Goblin. There's traffic on the 405, and the goblin just ate another baby in the studio. <laughs> oh, goblin, I sure do wish you'd stop gobbling up those babies. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't really know anything about goblins, historically, they're dicks. Cruel, deformed forest dwellers, haughty creatures, spiteful and impudent. Are the vengeful and evil goblins. You know, the kind of monsters that wear trilbies and call them fedoras and say milady at the end of every other sentence. These ones in particular like to use magic to pretend to be other people, like, say, a pretty girl with freckles the size of Delaware, and then tricking those unsuspecting victims into eating their goblin goo, which kind of looks like Nickelodeon slime if it could curdle. He was bewitched by that gaze. Was he? Or was he just trying to play connect the dots? Hey, look! A giraffe! So Peter drinks the goblin goo and then immediately starts sweating Kool-Aid because apparently the goo turns people into plants and then the goblins eat plant Peter. Because if looking like Ewoks with mange and killing people wasn't bad enough, they're also... vegetarians. So Grandpa Seth tells Joshua that it's not a story, goblins are real, and he needs to be careful in this world when Joshua's mom comes in to tell him it's time to go to bed, using a tone that's so robotic it makes Siri sound like a more loving mother. What are you doing still up, Josh? It is past your designated time for sleep mode. Good night, human son, I love you. You, 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 you. She asks Joshua why he's up in the first place, and when he tries to explain that it was because of Grandpa Seth, the camera turns and he's gone. <laughs> the reason why is because he's fucking dead. Still telling the same story, Josh? It's not a dream for me. Grandpa Seth has been gone for more than six months now. I don't know why she doesn't believe that he was talking to a ghost. That chair was very clearly moving on its own, which means it was either a ghost or a strange man pretending to be his grandpa coming in to tell him stories. And neither one is good. She eventually tells Joshua to stop farting around with imaginary grandparents and go to sleep because he has a big day tomorrow. We're going on a vacation tomorrow. A month in the country will do us all good. Ma'am, this is an 80s B-horror movie. It literally will not. The movie decides that we need to take some very close-up looks at what Joshua's sister Holly is up to, and we even get brief cameos by Tom Cruise and Johnny Depp. And that's about all the star power you're gonna get out of this film. Mom heads downstairs to tell Dad it's time for him to go to bed, but he's too busy spouting exposition at her about where they're going tomorrow because apparently she just forgot where she was going to be spending the next month. Do you know how many people live in Nilbog? No, how many? 26, including the presents. <sighs> Just think. We'll be living like our ancestors did. Yeah, we'll be peasants and farmers. You know, I really just love the look of regret on her face. <laughs> a whole month of hard labor and pretending to be poor in a town of 26 people? Well, at least I'll have time to get the divorce papers written up. With Joshua's head properly filled with nightmares and thoughts that he might actually be going insane, he gets spooked by Holly's boyfriend trying to sneak into the house. Alright Joshua, just remember what your therapist said. Smush face man child isn't real and he can't hurt you. Ah! Ah! 
Eventually, the boyfriend finds the right window, but when he gets in there, he scares the shit out of Holly, too. And it just makes me wonder, why aren't the parents doing anything right now? Both of their children are screaming very loudly in the middle of the night, and they just aren't doing anything about it? Oh, the 80s. Do you remember when home security was just like, a really big dog? Honestly, it's a miracle any of us are alive. I just know that if I would have screamed like that because somebody had broken into my room as a kid, my parents would have at least had the decency to come in and tell me to shut the hell up and get kidnapped quietly. What? They had work in the morning. So the boyfriend's name is Elliot, and he's here for a booty call. But Holly's not interested. Oh. Release your instincts in the back. Oh, are you nuts? He tried to turn me into a homo? The horde. I don't think it means what you think it means. After Holly tells Elliot how her family really feels about him, They say you're good for nothing, and they spend way too much time with your friends. Oh, oh, but I swear I never see them. His boys all climb up the one ladder they brought at the same time to try and convince her to come out with them. Uh, don't you want to come to Tanino's with us, Holly? Uh, don't you want some pizza? Man, you know, these are cute. These are cute. Hey! Hey! Then she calls Elliot gay and will likely die a virgin because he spends too much time with his friends. What's wrong with having friends? Nothing. If you want to remain a virgin for life, you take them to bed with you too. And I don't believe in group sex. It doesn't look like you believe in non-toxic masculinity either, so maybe slow your roll on being so judgy there for a second. Okay, Holly? Is it true that your family is going on vacation tomorrow? Yes. I'll come with you? Okay, I'll tell my father that you're coming with us tomorrow. Where are we going? You heard right, despite the fact that these two get along about as well as my pale ginger ass and the sun, she invites him to come to Neobog with her family on the one condition that he's not allowed to bring his friends. If you bring them with you, I never want to see you again. Okay, I'm going now and I'll tell them. I'll see you tomorrow morning. And Elliot, who the movie has now established as being just as dumb as he is horny, agrees to Holly's ultimatum, and then never shows up. Please, don't do this, Holly. We could have waited another 15 minutes. Instead, this absolute legend decides that his best course of action is to rent an RV and bring his boys anyway. Are you sure it's full of beautiful girls, Elliot? <laughs> Lots of them free and unattacked. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! God, they're so cool. The way you think they're all going in for high fives, but then they just like slap hands gently on the table. Way to subvert societal expectations, you absolute units. As the family gets closer to Nilbog, Grandpa Seth's ghost shows up again, this time hitchhiking on the side of the road, trying to love actually his family out of harm's way. Stop the car, Daddy, stop! What are you doing here, Grandpa? You're getting yourselves into big trouble. This is a bad place, little one. It even gives me the creeps. And I'm a fucking ghost. They make it all the way to the town center in front of the drugstore, just called Drug, and Joshua comes up with a brilliant plan that's gonna save his entire family. Whining like a little bitch. Dad! What, Josh? I don't like this place. Can we go home? Don't listen to him. Lead the way, farmer. Wait. Surprisingly, that didn't work. Also surprising, the entire town of Nilbog is watching them leave from the pharmacy window. You know, as you do. Just look at him, driving away in some without four-wheel drive. I tell you what, there ain't nothing scarier in this world than city folk with their liberal ideas and urban sensibilities. Doing a lot of voices today. I don't know why, but it's fun. When the family does eventually make it to the farm, the family that lives there is actually going to trade places with them and go live in their house for the entire month. Enjoy your stay, Neil Bond. Which, I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like the worst Airbnb deal ever. Yeah, sure, of course you can stay here for a month, but only if I get to live in your house. You hear that? Yeah, that's the sound of 10,000 introverts buttholes clenching at the same time at the thought of their worst fucking nightmare. On the way out, the family leaving sends Joshua a very threatening message via softball. And you know, I'm beginning to think that this town may not be on the up and up. Call it a hunch? Or you could just look at all the food they left behind covered in goblin goo that nobody seems to notice anything weird about. Typical country hospitality. Let's dig in! Grandpa Seth then bamfs in out of nowhere like Gandalf to try and get Joshua to stop his family from becoming fertilizer. How about this? Yeah, 
Grandpa! Stop them, Joshua. You're the only one that can do it. But what's Josh gonna do? If only he had more time! Okay. You have 30 seconds to come up with some way to stop them. Well, that's convenient. Did you know ghosts can stop time? I didn't know ghosts could stop time. Macho, did you know ghosts could stop time? He doesn't know. Now that time is frozen, even though it's pretty obvious that the actors aren't, how exactly is Josh supposed to stop his family from eating all that food? I must do it. I must do it. <laughs> oh, bravo, movie, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably, the dad takes Joshua upstairs and chews him out for both pissing on and off his family. Do you see this writing? Do you know what it means? Hospitality. And you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it! What are you going to do to me, Daddy? Eye for an eye, son. Eye for a piss-filled eye. But not really. Instead, he just, like, challenges him to a hunger strike-off to see who can go the longest without eating. Okay, Joshua. You want to get rough with me? You want to show me that you don't like the choice of this house for a vacation by going on a hunger strike? Well, I'll accept the challenge. Because that's what we call good parenting. Out in the forest, Elliot and his boys are in the RV watching a way better movie about a monkey with rocket farts when one of his friends, Arnold, gets fed up with being too horny and decides to go for a walk. I wonder what's gonna happen to him. Of freaking course. He's only out there for like 12 seconds before seeing a pretty half-naked woman covered in goblin goo just running through the forest and goes after her. Or at least he tries to. Ma'am! Please stop! Stop, I see. Don't smoke, kids. Otherwise, you won't be able to catch random forest women either. After all that huffing and puffing, Arnold manages to tackle this strange forest woman to the ground like a security guard going after shoplifters at a Kmart. And like any true heroic gentleman, he waits a whole 10 seconds before asking her if she wants to see his dick. You're human? Very human. You wanna see? And they say that chivalry's dead. What's the matter, are you sick? They made me eat that stuff. They who? Who are you talking about? She points at the goblins chasing her and their really stupid mask, and I feel like this is a really good time to point out that no, there are no trolls in Troll 2. Even the word troll isn't mentioned one single time. You see, the first troll movie came out in 1986, and it was a pretty moderate success. This movie was originally called Goblins, but the producers decided to cash in on the name and just changed it, without changing anything else in the movie. So anyway, I wonder how things are going between Arnold and the Goblins. And remember... <laughs> Not great. <laughs> the couple manages to make a daring escape, mostly because the goblins just don't chase them. And they run into what I think is a church? Run by a woman cosplaying both Riff Raff and Magenta from Rocky Horror at the same time. And is easily the best character in the whole movie. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Credence Leonor Gilgul of Ancient Druid. She's a creepy druid and seems to have a bit of a fetish for dry ice, which would probably explain why her teeth look like they're trying to run away from her head. She manages to trick Forest Girl into drinking one of her magic potions, and of course, they're actually filled with goblin goo. Luckily, during what happens next, Arnold is kind enough to narrate the entire process for us as Forest Girl turns into a giant cucumber and then gets eaten by the goblins. Now let me know if you've heard this one before. And then they're going to eat me! Oh my god! 
And thus, a meme was born. <laughs> Similar to... I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Or even... And where is Cool Cat? There he is! Hi, everybody! Hey. Hi! This is the scene that most people think of when they think of Troll 2. And I love everything about it. <laughs> Back at the farmhouse, Holly is practicing how she's gonna tell off Elliot like he's a contestant on America's Next Top Model or something. Dear Elliot Cooper, tomorrow morning will be your final judgment. Either me or your boys. Take it or leave it. When Grandpa Seth pays her a visit in the mirror. Joshua! Joshua! <laughs> Yep, Sorry, honey! Wrong mirror! Naturally, she freaks out and wakes up the entire family, eventually trading rooms with Joshua so he can talk to Grandpa Seth. What happened? You were in the wrong room! I still have to learn the layout of this house. Yeah, that makes total sense! Why would he know his way around? That's the most relatable ghost shit I've ever heard. I do appreciate that in order to get the effect of a floating head, they just made him wear like a black hoodie, but they didn't bother to kind of darken that out. So it makes it look like Grandpa Seth is intentionally trying to look like a severed head to scare his grandchildren. You have to convince them to leave here. This is an evil place. It is the kingdom of the goblins. Wait, we're in a goblin kingdom, but that means that it's time to dance, magic dance, magic dance, magic dance. That baby's still on The next day, everyone, including Elliot and his boys, are entirely out of food. So Joshua, his dad, and one of Elliot's boys all go into town to try and find something. When Joshua and his dad get to the drugstore, they see a sign that it's closed and decide to wait outside. Dad, with his vegetarian cookbook that I think my mom owned and that the cameraman really wants us to focus on, and Joshua with his skateboard. Because in the late 1980s, no American boy was legally allowed outside without one. Joshua then tries to talk to Grandpa Seth in a rearview mirror. Grandpa! Grandpa Seth! Are you there? And it's here that he learns the real truth about Nilbog. Nilbog! It's godless spelled backwards! This is their kingdom! Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Grandpa Seth literally told you that, like, two minutes ago. Are you even paying attention, Joshua? So what does Joshua do with this not-so-new but valuable information? Well, he can't tell his dad because he's totally passed out from reading that cookbook, so instead, he gets on his skateboard and fucks off, leaving his dad alone, asleep, in the middle of Goblin Town. Joshua, you do know you're in a horror movie, right? <laughs> Eventually, Joshua finds himself at a sort of goblin church, where he sees that the family who owns the farm he's staying at never actually left. Not only are they still here, but they're listening to this preacher deliver a fire and brimstone style sermon about the evils of meat, the same way the preacher talks about dancing in Footloose. Flesh! And by flesh, I mean all that stinking, disgusting meat. Hamburgers! Steaks! The stink! Sausages! The stink! And let me just tell you this right now, if this movie doesn't end with a barbecue and Kevin Bacon going, let's eat, I'm going to be very disappointed. Apparently, this sermon is so moving that Josh's skateboard tries to join the church and rats him out. Oh no. What's gonna happen to him? We don't know, because the movie decides to remind us of the B-plot that is Holly and Elliot's toxic-ass relationship. Elliot? Elliot! Holly, what a surprise. Choose, Elliot. Either me or your friends. I don't understand. <laughs> Do you understand now? Get it? She gave him an ultimatum and then punched him in the face. It's funny, because he's a boy. Laugh. <laughs> Back at the church, the entire town is trying to force feed Joshua into eating some goblin goo ice cream. Open your mouth, my little friend. Please open it.
which they won't just force down his throat. Like, why? He's screaming, his mouth is wide open. Just take the spoon and shove it in there. Movie, are you telling me that the goblins have no problem tricking people into eating goblin goo, which turns them into plants and then killing them and eating them, but they draw the line at consent? Is that a rule that it only counts if they willingly eat the goblin goo? Like tricking them into doing it is fine, but forcing them? That's just barbaric. Meanwhile, Yellow Shirt Boy is apparently dying. This is because on his way into town, he got picked up by the sheriff who feeds him a goblin goo sandwich. <laughs> Thanks, Sheriff. This is good. I'm sure you'll all enjoy Nilbog. We're hospitable people, especially to strangers. And then he went to the drugstore, met the creepy ass owner. Can I help you? Coffee. There's no coffee here in Nilbog. It's the devil's drink. Here's some Nilbog milk and then drank some goblin goo milk. And while he's taking his dear sweet time shuffling off this mortal coil, he eventually ends up at the same church where Arnold is in. And man, does he look messed up. I guess in Arnold's case, it's true what they say. You are what you eat. I'm Groot. I know, buddy, that was a bit of a stretch for a joke, but you know, low hanging fruit. Ha <laughs> ha! Plant jokes. Despite the fact that he's dying, Yellow Shirt actually does try to save his friend. Get me out of here, Drew. Just get me out of here. Okay. But because Arnold's in this heavy ass pot, he can't get very far, and Yellow Shirt gets caught by the Druid Lady and then bitch slapped across the room. Oh no. So Druid Lady finds herself in a bit of a pickle. She's got one boy who's almost plant and one boy who's not quite plant yet. So what is her solution to turning them both into plants? Well, that's very simple. She takes a chainsaw, cuts off Arnold's dick, <laughs> turns it into a smoothie and then feeds it to the other boy. Yes, that is the most logical thing she could have done. <laughs> Cutting off dicks with chainsaws. Gonna have a bit of a hard time keeping this one monetized. Eventually, Joshua's dad wakes up, finds Joshua at the church, and saves him from the total annoyance that is the entire town. What are you doing to my son? Uh, nothing. Okay, that makes sense. Bye bye now. And on the way home, he stops to pick up Holly, who's with Elliot. Oh no. So, kids, how's life? Elliot then decides to go with Holly and her dad, leaving his last remaining friend alone in the woods. Like he wasn't enough of a tool already. Hey, wait a minute, Elliot. You're gonna leave me here alone? Yes! And what about the beautiful liberated girls? I'm gonna tell him. Don't you dare. The dad then takes Joshua, Holly, and Elliot back to the house they're staying at, where apparently the entire town somehow beat them home to throw them a party. We even have a little food. A little food, they prepared a whole feast. And no one except Joshua thinks that it's weird because they're just so dang hungry that they've turned stupid. Joshua, I've had enough. I'm sick of this. I want you to go to your room immediately. Seriously, kid, if I was you, I would just give up on him and skate your way out of town. You're probably better off. Maybe you should check the mirror to see if Grandpa Seth has any advice. Grandpa! Grandpa Seth! Come quick! Oh shit, wrong number! While Joshua battles for his life in the world's angriest butt dial, the family has been placed in a circle downstairs and is being cheered on by the entire town to eat. And you can see the wheels finally starting to click in their brains like, hey, this is kind of weird. Back upstairs, Grandpa Seth finally shows up and chops off the goblin's hand with an ax. Holy shit, Grandpa hardcore. The goblin runs away back through the mirror, fixing it on its way back. That was very nice of it. It didn't need to do that, but it's very much appreciated. And it turns out that that goblin is the druid lady. Cause sure, why not? At this point, Grandpa Seth kneels down, looks his grandson in the eye, this boy who's been traumatized and almost murdered and eaten, and he does what any grandfather would do. He gives him a Molotov cocktail and tells him to burn this bitch to the ground. 
Hurry, let's put some fuel on the fire. Aw, oh, yeah. Here we go. Time to kick this movie into high gear. Cut it out, kid. You'll never be able to stop us. Oh man. This movie doesn't want anyone to have any fun. As for you, old man, go back to your kingdom of shadows. I order you to the sacred power of the magic stone. Go back to so yeah, the preacher starts spouting a magical spell and tries to send Grandpa Seth ghost to hell, but can't because apparently Grandpa's never been to hell, so I don't understand why the preacher was trying to send him there. Are you really in hell? No! But I know a trick! Let us grab the man who was there! Caught me! What happened? Yee! I don't know what kind of weird demon devil worshipping bullshit Grandpa Seth was up to before he died, but I gotta tell ya, man would he have been fun to play D&D with. The preacher manages to put on his fireproof gloves and Dad comes out with a fire extinguisher, but it's just too late. Oh my god, what is this? He was one of us, and you killed him! Now it's your turn! And the family finally gets to see this town for what it really is. State staring contest champs. Seriously, the goblins threaten to murder them and then don't do anything. They just kind of mean mug them all the way back into the house and then don't go in the house. Quick in the house! Why? What is happening here? Are goblins kind of like the weeping angels from Doctor Who, where as long as you're looking directly at them, they just can't move? Like, what is the logic behind all of this? Whatever you do, don't blink. Because if you do, you will definitely miss something really, really stupid. <laughs> Back at the druid lady goblin's house, after she comes back through the mirror, she walks over to her miniature version of Stonehenge that she just has in her living room and prays to her patron saint of horribleness, Saint Who Gives a Shit, and asks them to give her the power to vanquish these mighty foes. Come and protect your children! And nothing is more powerful than a makeover! <laughs> New hair, new nails, new hand, new makeup, new boobs. It's like the lost season of Queer Eye that nobody wanted. <laughs> And you want to know what? If Queer Eye Nilbog really was a thing, I ain't even gonna lie, I would cry every single episode. I can't help it, alright? Karamo gets me every single time. So what exactly does the Goblin Druid Lady do with all this newfound strength and power? She shows up outside of the RV where the last of Elliot's crew, who I'm calling Stripey Boy, is all alone watching TV. And she's wielding nothing but lingerie and an ear of corn. <laughs> then invites him outside and basically just says, Let's get weird. And while all of you know that I have a pretty strict no kink shaming policy on this channel, I will say I am very much against wasting food. What's the matter? Aren't you hungry? Actually, I like popcorn. Well, no problem. All we have to do is heat it up. So while the amateur corn stars are getting their ears shucked and their cobs buttered, <laughs> I tried to do it with a straight face and I just couldn't. Back at the house, the family is trying to have a seance to bring back Grandpa Seth again, while the goblins just kind of politely wait outside? Why are they not going into the house? They're not vampires. They don't need permission to get inside. They wait outside so long that the seance actually works. Joshua! Joshua! And when Grandpa Seth does return, he just transports Joshua somewhere else and replaces him with a goblin. I don't think that Grandpa Seth has the entire family's well-being at heart. And while the rest of Joshua's family is left to fend for themselves, Joshua ends up in the goblin druid lady's house because it's literally the only other location in the movie. And Grandpa's there too, and he gives him a backpack and tells him, You can only take out the contents 
when you really need it. And that in order to make the goblins go away, he needs to go over and rub up on this magic stone. What do you have to do, Grandpa? Catch it. I promise it's not as creepy as it sounds, but man, does it sound creepy. All right, we're gonna touch the stone, kill the goblins. Grandpa, nothing's happening. Something has happened now, Joshua. I'm leaving. Goodbye forever. Goodbye, Grandpa. Goodbye. Ah! What were you going to do? I take that back. So yeah, Grandpa just disappears and Joshua gets caught. How is he going to get out of this one? Now, we are going to feed you, Josh. Oh, that's right. The backpack that Grandpa gave him. What could possibly be in there? Why, I'll tell you. He's going to save the day with the power of... A double-decker bologna sandwich! <laughs> bologna. It turns out that the backpack with the secret weapon to destroy all the goblins was a fucking school lunch. And somehow it works. <laughs> the goblins are so offended and freaked out by a sandwich that they just can't touch Joshua anymore, giving his family time to show up. How they knew where to go? I don't know. The movie doesn't know. I don't think anybody knows anything anymore. They all come up and touch the rock together and use the power of goodness and Oscar Mayer to completely destroy the goblins. Brutally. <laughs> The next day, they all make it back home, including Elliot, who clearly doesn't give two shits about his missing friends. They're all traumatized, but they're alive. Everyone kind of decides that they need some space. I have to pass by the office. I need to go home for a while. I'll come with you. But Josh and his mom decide to stay home and settle in. But before they can recover and get back to their lives, it turns out the goblins are not only not dead, They're downstairs eating Joshua's mom. Do you want some? And that's how the movie ends. Troll 2 is amazing, and if you haven't seen it, you owe it to yourself to watch it at least once. The acting's over the top, the special effects are ridiculous, the story makes no sense, but it is impossible to watch without a smile on your face. It's campy and endearing and everything that myself and fans of this channel just plain live for. If this oh my God! doesn't brighten up your day, then I'm sorry, you're on the wrong part of YouTube. Hit the big red button, leave a like and comment with your thoughts. I will see you all in the next video. And just remember, be cool to each other. <laughs>